In this video, we work our second example in which the forcing function involves a delta function. I've actually got two delta functions here. We've got a drag delta at t minus one and a drag delta at t minus two. So I could think of impulses um, acting at t equals one and t equals two. So, so two like sudden things happen to this system at those two moments in time. And the question is, well, what type of function would you have if that right-hand side looked like this and the left-hand side looked like that if y of zero was equal to one and y prime of zero was equal to zero. Well, we can figure that out using um, the Laplace transformation method. So we're gonna start the way we always start. Introduce our notation. We don't want to leave the reader hanging and wondering where that capital Y came from. The Laplace transform of little y of t is going to be defined as big Y of S, and then we will take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. Then we'll have the Laplace transform of Y double prime plus the Laplace transform of Y prime equals two times the Laplace transform of delta at T minus one minus the Laplace transform of delta at t minus two. The Laplace transform of y double prime is s squared times y of s minus s times little y at zero minus y prime at zero. And then we're adding the Laplace transform of y prime, so that's s times y of s minus little y at zero. And that equals two times Laplace transform of direct delta at t minus t naught. If this is delta at t minus t naught, then t naught must equal one here. And this is similar, just t naught must equal two on that one. The Laplace transform of delta at t minus t naught is e to the negative s times t naught. And if t naught is one, this is gonna be an e to the negative s. And here we're gonna have e to the negative t naught or s times t naught as well. So it's gonna be e to the negative two s over there. And then we just substitute in our initial conditions, y of zero was equal to one and y prime of zero is equal to zero. And we wanna get s or y of s by itself. So I would group these y of s terms together, factor out the y of s, then I would add all the other terms to the other side. So I've got a minus s here. So let's add s to both sides. Subtracting zero does nothing. Then I've got a minus one. So let's add one to both sides. And we are trying to get y of s by itself. So we'll divide both sides by s squared plus s. Now you could divide all of these into um, the entire uh, right hand side by s squared plus s, but I would recommend um, separating it this way because that is something I would take the inverse transform of separately from this piece and from this piece. Each of these is going to correspond to its own heavy side function when we take an inverse transform. Um, so I would like to keep all of that separated like that um, just to make the algebra a little bit easier later. So we computed the Laplace transform of the differential equation and then we solved for y of s. And we wanna simplify if we can. So you have y of s equals, here I would factor out an s in that denominator. So I've got s times s would give me s squared, s times one would give me s. That's convenient, the s plus one's reduced. We just end up with a one over s there. And then we've got an e to the negative a s times two over um, s times, or s squared plus s, which we know factors to s times s plus one. And we've got a minus uh, e to the negative two s times one over s times s plus one. So y of s is equal to this. Now you have some options for how you compute the inverse transforms of this two over s times s plus one and the one over s times s plus one there. You have a choice. You can, you can use partial fraction decomposition for this. And then whatever I get for this, I could just double it to get the uh, 
partial fraction decomposition for that. Um, you could also use the um, inverse transform of f of s times g of s, which would be the um, convolution. And actually, that might be that might be really nice here, given that one of the functions is is really simple. It's just one over s. I think I will do that this time. I actually I've never really done that before. I've never really used that. I almost always use partial fraction decomposition, but this time I'm I'm not going to use partial fractions. I'm going to use the inverse transform of the product to get those. Um, inverse transforms. So um, we want to find y of t. So we compute the inverse transform of y of s term by term. The inverse transform of the first one is just one. And the inverse transform of the second piece, oops, sorry, that should be just an s times s plus one there. That is an e to the negative a s times f of s. And this requires us to do the same thing. This is e to the negative a s times f of s. Now this f and this f are obviously different. Um, but here a is equal to 1. And on this one a is equal to 2. And I know that if I compute the inverse transform of this, um, I could just multiply it by two to get the inverse transform of that. So I think I'll just do this one first. Remember how this works, the inverse transform of e to the negative a s times f of s is the inverse transform of f, which is gonna give us an f of t, and then you replace the t by t minus a, and then you multiply by the heavy side function at t minus a. So this will be f of t minus a times h of t minus a. For both of these guys, we just need to compute this inverse transform here. Um, so for that last one, let's say I'm trying to find f of t. So f of t is the inverse transform of one over s times s plus one which I can think of as a product. That's one over s times one over s plus one. I'll remember this we talked about before, the inverse transform of f of s times g of s is the convolution of f with g. So all you have to do is find f and g and then compute their convolution, which is this integral from zero to t of f of tau times g of t minus tau d tau. And once you compute that, that's going to be the function uh, t, function of t, that will give you this um, as its Laplace transform. So I have to think about what I would take the transform of to get a 1 over s. Well, the inverse transform of 1 over s is 1. Actually, let's write it this way. We want the inverse transform of one over s. That's gonna be f of t. And I want the convolution of that with the inverse transform of one over s plus one. That would be my uh, g of t. Well, this piece is gonna give me a one. This piece is gonna give me an e to the negative a s where a is negative one, so, or e to the negative a t, where e is negative, a is negative one. So we get the convolution of one with e to the negative t which is the same as the convolution of e to the negative t with one. So we could evaluate that as the integral from zero to t of e to the negative tau with respect to tau. So I will anti-differentiate that, plug in zero and t for tau, and we'll have e to the negative t, or negative e to the negative t minus a negative, so it's gonna be plus e to the zero, which is one. This is one minus e to the negative t it's the inverse transform of this piece. Now, if I take that and I multiply it by two, well, then I would just have a two here. So I would get the exact same result, but just multiplied by two for this guy. Okay, so let's keep going. Almost done. My y of t is 
um, the inverse transform of one over s, which was one, plus the Laplace transform, or the inverse Laplace transform, I forgot my little inverse symbol up there, of e to the negative a s times two over s times s plus one, minus the inverse transform of e to the negative two s times one over s times s plus one. Well, that is the same as the inverse transform of two over s times s plus one, but then you replace the t with t minus a. Oops, in this case, the a was one. So we're gonna replace the t with t minus one and we'll multiply by the heavy side function at t minus one. And then over here, we're gonna do the same type of thing. We take the inverse transform of one over s times s plus one and we replace the t with t minus a, but here a is two. We multiply that by the heavy side function at t minus two. Well, this is just two times this. So we're gonna have one plus two times one minus e to the negative t, but then we're replacing the t with t minus one. And then we multiply by the heavy side function at t minus one. And then over here, we do the same thing, but this function is exactly this function. So we're gonna have uh, one minus e to the negative t. Again, replacing the t with t minus two. And then you multiply by the heavy side function at t minus two. Okay, that's our answer. And since it involves heavy side functions, I always like to write it as a piecewise function when I'm done. Since we've got a heavy side function at t minus one and a heavy side function at t minus two, I just remind myself that's gonna be zero until we get to one and then it jumps up to one. And the heavy side function at t minus two is zero until you get to two and then it jumps up to one. So this is gonna have three pieces. On the interval from zero to one, both of these heavy side functions are equal to zero. So we're gonna have one plus something times zero minus something times zero. So it's just gonna be one. And then on the interval from one to two, this function is one and this function is zero. So we're gonna have one plus this times one minus this times zero. So it's just gonna be one plus this. Um, if I distribute that two, I'll have two times one is two plus one is three minus two times this exponential. And if you want, you could distribute that negative and then you'd get a one minus T if you changed the order. So that's on the interval from one to two. And then on the interval from two to infinity, both of these are equal to one. So we're gonna have one plus this minus that. So that's one plus two minus two times this exponential minus one minus a negative, that's gonna be plus e to the negative quantity t minus two, which is two minus t. And that's on the interval from two to infinity. And of course we could simplify a bit and I probably would, the one and the negative one reduce. And so we get this. That is our y of t. That is the function that you can take the derivative of twice and substitute in this equation that looks like you get direct delta functions, this difference between delta functions, which is interesting. And you've got y of zero equals one and y prime of zero equals zero.